Wiley, and I'll be your presenter for today. And Victoria Wiley, many of you may know her. Hi, everybody. Victoria Wiley, literacy coordinator. That is my dog in the background. He is 150 pounds, so his bark is <laughs> any lighter than that. So I'm sorry. Victoria will be monitoring our chat box. Um, I'm going to share my screen. Um, and our icebreaker will be a part of title page um, as we allow other people to come in. So you guys are able to participate um, by placing your name and your position, um, what agency you are with, and your favorite read aloud book inside of the chat box. Don't forget to add those favorite books. Yes, make sure we will be coming back to it. So make sure you are including um, your favorite read aloud book. And I can't see the, am I able to see the chat? I'll share my screen. It'll be very, very difficult. So Victoria and I. <laughs> okay, so Victoria <laughs> has it, okay. <laughs> and we'll give people about two more minutes. So we're getting up there. We have about 30 people who responded. Seems like we have a lot of the very hungry caterpillar. <laughs> it's my favorite too, so I get it. All right. So again, I am Kiara Bowie and Victoria Wiley will be um, our chat box monitor. Okay, I need to be able to get video. All right, so today we will be going over some community norms, an icebreaker, um, we'll do a reel out and then we'll go over the three pillars of um, literacy rich environment, we'll go the three pillars of light touch literacy, read aloud literacy rich environment, independent reading, and then we'll do a check in. So, some community norms let's create standards and expectations that will support a productive working environment. 
Um, what I need from you guys is respect, participation, um, to stay muted and use the chat box unless you know we're doing anything that's interactive. Um, you guys can kind of share what you need or what you expect from myself or any other participants in the chat room. Okay. And don't worry, we'll get um we'll get back to our um favorite read aloud book. All right, so our icebreaker. Two truths and one lie. So basically we have three statements here. Two of them are the one of them is false. You guys have to pick which one you think is the false statement. You guys can use the chat box to put the number um, of which one you believe to be false. <laughs> Aurora, they do, right? <laughs> it's not a trick question. <laughs> Just pay close attention to the to the details of each sentence. That's it. All right, we're guessing, Kiera. We have some people guessing. Come on, y'all. Y'all got this. Let's do it. They're rolling in, Kiera. Okay, I see our number going up. Mm-hmm. Okay. They might know something. They look, they got me in here. <laughs> hey, no come something. on, y'all. I think they know something, Kiera. I'm just know some stuff. Okay. I see numbers still going up. So once we get to a pause, so. I'll to the next thing. All right, it looks like numbers stop. So Victoria, you think we got enough answers? I, I mean, I think we got enough. We have a lot of answers, but I think we got a lot of correct answers too. So that's yeah. what makes me happy. So we'll read over the statement. Statement one is the perfect literacy rich environment consists of books for each age, anchor charts and word walls. The second one is some independent reading benefits include building reading stamina, enlarging vocabulary and background knowledge, initiate and reading habits and creating self-efficient readers. Number three is a read aloud is an instructional practice where teachers and caregivers read text aloud to children. The reader incorporates variations of pitch, tone, pace, volume, pauses, eye contact, questions and comments to produce fluent and enjoyable delivery. So we're going to do last call. If you did not answer, go ahead and throw it in the chat right now. Put your lie in the chat or forever hold your peace. We are picking. Uh oh, we got somebody else who participated. See, I knew we needed to do a last call. All right. So, what was our lie, Kiera? Our lie was number one. Yes. Perfect literacy, rich environment. I'm sorry, you guys. We got how we got a lot of people who said number one. Yes, yes, we did. Yes, we did. Yay! So obviously, the perfect literacy and envi rich environment includes a whole lot more than just books, anchor charts, and word walls. Um, we'll get a little bit more in detail, but it is about the materials, the resources, and as well as the people. That's right, the people. No. Yep. All right, any questions about that so far? All right, moving right along. <laughs> so this is very interactive, guys. <laughs> um, this is a recap, so I have to see what you guys know. All right, so you guys are going to use the chat box to match the definitions with um, each word. So we have read aloud, literacy, rich environment, um and independent reading so you guys are going to you can put the order 
in which they go in. So, so A is which one, B is which one, C is which one. And you guys did so good with the first one, so we know you got this. This is a really smart group here. They they are getting all of the answers correct. Alrighty. Victoria, can you read um, some of the answers that we have? Absolutely. So uh, the large majority of the group, I want to say everybody who has put something in the chat said A is read aloud, C is <clears throat> literacy rich environment, and B is independent reading. Okay, well, that is definitely correct. <laughs> we do have a bunch who is, you know, this is just a recap. So I feel like everyone is on the right um, speed here. So read aloud. Um, we're back to what we had in the chat box. What is your favorite read aloud book? Why is it your favorite? Think about a time where you were reading this book to you and think about something that you remember that you did, right? And then we'll kind of talk about it. So people will be, you can raise your hands, um, you know, or we can kind of just, is there a raise your hand option in this one, Naomi, in Zoom? For people there to is. So you can either, um, if everybody looks on the bottom of their screen to reactions, there are some, um, some, Space is there, there's like a little clap, there's a thumbs up. Or if you go to, let's see. And that's it, yes, yeah. <laughs> All right, so we do need a few volunteers. I'll go first, I even brought my book with, uh-oh, no, no, okay. There I brought it with me. It's the They the Crayons Quit. Um, and I love this book because it has so much personality. I am able to become so many different people. I can really have fun with it. Um, and I can, you know, just be more than one person and the kids get a kick out of it. I feel silly when I, when I first started doing read alouds, but now that I've been doing it so much, I'm like, I just have fun with it. Um, and yeah, it's, it's basically a book about um, crayons who feel overworked and underappreciated and some of them feel like they're not being used enough. Some of them feel like they're being used too much. One of the crayons loses his wrappings and he's embarrassed about being naked. Um, and the kids crack up about that part. Um, but yeah, so I really enjoy changing my voice and being multiple personalities all in one story. So you guys can tell me some of yours.
So my favorite one is Chicka Chicka Boom Boom. And I must say, I have Kiara to thank for that because in Kiara's interview <laughs> with this position, she created this entire like read aloud um, thing about Chicka Chicka Boom Boom. But um, I read it to my little one um, used to. He's now he's in the Daniel Tiger book, so whatever. But he used to really, really be in the Chicka, Bo Chicka Chicka Boom Boom. And the reason why I love it so much is because there's a rhythm to it. So it's like A to B and B to, like there's just a little song that goes with it. Um, and we get very, very active with it. So when um, they talk about being twisted up alley oop, we like to try to twist ourselves in the pretzels and all that stuff. So it's really, really interactive. There's this really great rhythm to it. Um, and it's just, it's just the cutest little book ever, so. Yeah, Kiara definitely made that one of my favorites. I said a boom, chicka boom. That was one of my favorites too. All right, guys, we had a whole lot of responses. I don't know if I can see the people. Katira! Hi, Kiara, I miss you. <laughs> Um, my favorite book is The Cat in the Hat because it's a fast paced book. I feel like it never gets old and the kids really like when you mess up the words. They think it's funny. <laughs> Thank you, Katira. There were a lot of very hungry caterpillar lovers. How, why, why do you love that story? That's one of my favorites. Someone who loved that one, want to share? I'll share, it's Angela here from the Office of Children and Families. I love The Very Hungry Caterpillar because I myself am a very hungry caterpillar. <laughs> And I find that my favorite like phrases in books, like storybooks or even um, chapter books, as we call them, <laughs> are when people describe like food being wrapped in like brown paper packages. That's just like ASMR for me, if, if you know what ASMR is. So I really love like descriptions of food and pictures of food and eating. So and I like how um, it really ties in the illustration and like there's like cutouts and it's like a cardboard book so it's like kind of a more tactile experience so I really like that. Angela yeah I have to agree I think the, that book won me over because it was cutouts and the caterpillar was like literally going through the book um, eating the different letters um, and the different things that were that started with that letter so yeah I have to agree that was probably why that's one of my favorites. All right. Um, Victoria, can you just name some of the other books that were like mentioned if we don't have any more volunteers? Sure. Green Eggs and Ham was mentioned um, a, a few times. So Dr. Seuss, I guess, is a is a fan favorite. The Day the Crayons Quit. Monica also loves that one. The Paperback Princess. Um, let me see. Some people didn't put it, but let me go back down. A snowy day. Uh, the day the crayon came home. Oh. Here comes the strikeout. Um, uh, probably missing some because I'm trying to go cat in the hat. I have. Oh wait, someone had too many to remember. <laughs> Hungry caterpillar. It's my hair and I'll wear it and I'll wear it. That's another favorite. Okay. So yeah, good night, little Harper. So yeah, we have we have quite a few. Check. Okay. Uh, check. All righty. So I asked you guys to kind of tell me some of the things so that um, you guys can see some of the stuff that you are already doing when you're doing read alouds, right? Some of the strategies that you guys are already using. Um, so obviously when you think about your favorite book, 
what are some things like what makes it your favorite those are the same things you kind of want to point out when you're reading so like picking books for the children one of the things you want to do is a book that you know that they'll enjoy right so making sure that the text is engaging. Naomi said something about her picking like love and boom chicka boom because she moves and she can kind of, it has rhythm to it and her and her son can move. Your kids can do the same thing. So um, we wanna make sure that we're selecting relevant and engaging text. And it's important to consider how the text support the activities and the projects that you guys plan on doing. Um, so whether it's a weekly project or a monthly project, a lot of people, Dr. Seuss month is coming up. So a lot of people select books and text based off of, um, you know, that and the whole month or just maybe it's a day project where you guys are just reading this book for today and you just have a theme for today. Um, you wanna make sure that you're reading the text first so that you can kind of pull out those things. You can pull out the questions um, that you can use to, you know, start discussions with the kids um, and kind of encourage the youth to kind of talk and get to thinking, what do, what do you think about this? What did you notice about this story? Um, we wanna make sure that we're introducing some type of background knowledge so that the kids can kind of understand what the read aloud would be about. So if you're doing a book like crayons, then maybe the theme may be fillings, right? And being considerate. So you wanna kind of maybe play a game that will introduce the theme of the book first. Um, read the story with a lot of expressions. Again, I said, that's one of the reasons why I do love the day the day the, the day the crayons quit is because there's so much personality. If you read the book, just regular, the, the book would not get this, like you wouldn't have the same message. It would not be as fun. Um, so making sure that you're bringing your personality to your readings is a great strategy um, when you're doing a read aloud. Um, and then sometimes articles and current events often spur, spark um, great conversations for kids and debates. So even kindergartners love debates, right? So um, everyone has an opinion about something. Um, I do read alouds with my son at home um, and my kids are from three to nine and they all have different opinions about COVID-19 and they all have different opinions about the stuff that's going on in the world. So, um, and it's fun to hear what they know about stuff and where they are and how they feel about certain stuff as well. Um, and again, just choosing a book that you enjoy. When you enjoy your book, the kids are going to enjoy it. Um, and they'll see like, oh, she's really excited or oh, he's really excited about this book or look how silly this person is getting reading to us or look how much fun this person is while they're reading. Any questions about that or any other strategies that you guys use? And you can just unmute if you want during this time. Okay. All right, so why are we reading? I remember when we first started um, going into sites, someone was like, one of the program um, staff members told me they did not understand why we were an after school program who were reading to children. Like, how was it going to help the children? It exposes children to text. Um, it makes sure that we're challenging them to the ones that they can read independently. Um, it develops high thinking, high level thinking. So when you're asking them questions, when you're exposing them to new vocabulary words, it's giving them um, it's giving them that sense to develop, you know, high level thinking. You're able to allow them to, again, you're sparking conversation by stopping when you're reading to say, okay, how do you think the red crayon felt when this happened? Or what do you think will happen next? It allows them to kind of get built that comprehension through um, discussion and active thinking. Again, it expands vocabulary. And again, when kids see adults doing something, they're more than likely to have fun doing it and they're able to pick up on those traits, right? So if you're in a household or if you're in a classroom and you see an adult reading for pleasure, children are more likely to pick up a book and read for pleasure as well. Um, kids are uh, also able to kind of see what they like, you know? So they might not like the day the crayons quit, but they might like boom, chicken, boom. Um, they might like the hungry caterpillar. They're able to kind of figure out what they like introduce them to new authors, um, and then just kind of find a new love for reading.
So our literacy rich environment. Um, can you guys see me? I don't know if you got, oops, sorry. I don't know if you guys can see me. Very nice. We can see yeah. you. Okay, so some people, thank you. I know some people um, have classrooms, some people, which is a permanent space, and maybe they can go into a classroom that they share with the daytime teachers. Um, some people are still virtual. And with all of those things, I think that some of the stuff that we'll discuss will still be relevant to like to all three, um, no matter what. So if you're virtual, you can change, you kind of create your environment, right? So you can put up a virtual background. Um, if you wanted to change, if you're doing a book, maybe you might want to put the book up in your background behind you or put a theme in the back with you so that the kids can kind of see, you know what we're talking about, it's fun. Maybe you teach them how to change their background um, and you know, so that that everyone is a part of it. If you want to put a word wall up there, you're able to do that as well. Um, if you're in a permanent space, you can create this type of vision in your permanent space if you um, will. And if you have a space where you are more temporary, you can always use trifold boards. If you use carts, you can post use post the large post-it notes um, and just use stuff that you're able to kind of just Put up, it might be a word wall or you can just put it up and um, take it down as needed. So before anything, you want to make sure that you are setting and posting your norms and expectations. You want to make sure that into your literacy space, right? And that's not only the kids, right? We want to make sure that the parents know what we expect from them. We want to know what our partners expect. If we have visitors, everyone should kind of know like, this is a literacy space and this is what's going on. When you walk into a library, you kind of know that you have to automatically turn your phone on vibrate, right? Or you have to use your inside voices. Those are the same type of expectations that you want your children and your families and your partners, whoever's coming into your space to know. So we want to use some of those same library rules. Quiet voice, you want to make sure your kids know to handle the books with care and respect. We only Resources are limited sometimes and we have to be able to respect and, you know, take care of our stuff so that everyone can enjoy it. A lot of our books will be um, eventually be um, labeled and they'll be leveled. So we want to make sure that the kids are put in those books in the right places and protecting the books at all times. So those are just some of the literacy norms or expectations that I have. You guys can share some of your um, literacy norms and expectations that you have for your kids. Some people may say you have to sit down at your desk or you can sit wherever you want. So you guys can share some of your um, literacy norms or your, your literacy rich environment um, norms or expectations that the kids have or that you wanna set if you don't have any already. And we'll take about two minutes just putting it, dropping it inside of the chat box. Victoria, you're welcome. So just read them out as they come, come in. So I just put mine, like I, I really believe in, in like making a space kind of like everybody's. Um, and I think with young people, the only way that they really feel a part of a space is if you build that with them. So, um, mm -hmm. My formula is always to create norms together, right? So you may have things in your mind that you want to do, but it's still not um, an official norm until we all come to that agreement, right? Because I think sometimes what's a norm for us may not be a norm for another person. And that's why those norms aren't respected or followed in the same way. So I really do do a lot of building with young people when it comes to norms and setting norms and expectations. And of course, there are some that are not going to change, right? Respecting your resources because they may be limited. You want to be able to have them for everyone else. So that's like a norm that's not going to change and everyone is going to understand because you want everyone to utilize those resources. And again, it's also that piece of ownership, 
um, just to kind of piggyback when kids, and we'll talk a little bit more about that when we talk about independent reading, but it's that ownership that kind of makes people, or even like it's kids, adults, it makes you feel a little bit more implied, inclined to kind of go with the flow and, you know, be more accepting. But yeah, Victoria, I think we did have a few. Thank you for giving us that. No? Not on my end. I, the only one I was, I put mine in the chat. All right, guys. So we do expect you guys to participate in the chat box. Um, again, even if it's not something that you have already um, started with your youth, it could be something that you um, want to start doing with your youth as well. So moving along, again, I said that- Lisa, Lisa um, just put, I'm sorry, my dog is barking while I'm trying to talk to y'all, sorry about that. So Lisa put, she personally couldn't study in the library because the quiet was distracting. So, so, so Lisa, I am like one of those people, I need a little bit of noise, not a lot um, too. So yeah, I don't think, I think if that fits the, the majority of your group, then go with it. If that's a working environment that everyone can sustain in, do it. I don't think it has to be absolutely quiet. And I, and I don't think, you know, like, I don't think talking is always a distraction because there's, there's good talk happening, right? There, so encourage those things if necessary. Mm -hmm. And then sharing with what they are reading with each other. Yes. Agreed, agreed. That's a big one. Because kids learn from other kids, right? Adults learn from other adults. So yes, yeah. learn from each other. Hi, I'm Gail. Are you hearing me? Is someone talking? Yes, yes. we hear yes. you, Gail. <laughs> I was having some similar thoughts like Victoria because sometimes you would find there are those kids who actually like to be by themselves. So I was just thinking of um, respecting each other's space. That was one of the rules because sometimes one child might have gone there just for that quiet time and really read. And another child, because they're, they're like that one as a friend would want to be there with that child. So mine was kind of like similar to, um, and I think, um, Kiera is supposed to kind of like touch on that a little bit later. So I just wanted to add to tr to add that in. Thank you, Gail. Um, welcome. Uh, partner reading. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And again, your literacy rich environment is for your norms and your expectations just like for your program in general, that is for you and your youth, right? You know what best works for your youth. Um, your expectations might look different from another site because your kids are different at a, at their, from that site, right? So your expectations and your norms should fit you and your youth. All right. So again, materials is one of the things that... Um, makes up a literacy rich environment. So we wanna make sure that we have some creative and fun book displays. Again, if you are in a permanent space, it will look different if you are in a space where you have a shared space. Maybe your shared space, you may have a carts or crates or buckets um, and you bring them out um, each and every time you do literacy. Um, whereas though, if you have a permanent space, you might just have like a bookcase and have your books um, up that way. Um, we want to make sure that we have a variety of books. So that's magazines, audio books, newspapers, um, chapter books, picture books. Sometimes kids are able to go on a computer and read. So that's all different types of reading materials, not just books. Um, you want to make sure that we have relevant and age appropriate books. So if you have 
kids who speak a different language, we want to make sure that we have books for them. If we have kids from kindergarten to eighth grade, you want to make sure that we have different levels of books. We want to make sure that the books are kid, the books that your kids actually want to read, right? So there's this thing called mirrors and windows. And basically you want your kids to be able to look at a book and kind of mirror the image that they see for themselves and then look out the window to kind of be able to see different stuff and explore different things that they would like to um, maybe read about or kind of build their interest. Um, comfortable reading chairs. Some people have bean bags. Some people, kids like my kids when I was a director, they like to read on the floor, on a carpet, or sometimes on the desk or under the desk. And whatever, wherever they wanted to sit, I would allow it just for that um, time. I mean, we're not school, we're after school. As long as it was somewhere safe, we all, I would just let them do what they wanted to do. Um, we want to make sure that the kids, their work is displayed, right? So the kids are working hard and they're doing it. And I believe Victoria kind of mentioned this when she said like involving the kids. So even just creating and posting those norms, right? We might come up with them as a group, but we can let the kids write them. When we're making our word walls, we can make sure that the kids are creating creating those flashcards or if they have a project that's done we can post it and display it so that the kids can see their work their parents can see their work um and it feels like their space so notebooks if they're reading a book and they just need to jot some ideas down or some questions down maybe some um new vocabulary words that they need to see trifold boards again if you have a um, temporary space they are pretty much good for any and everything um <laughs> You can put anchor charts on those. You can use those for um, as a board. If you don't have a board in your classroom to write on, we want to make sure that they have writing utensils, paper, reading logs for independent reading, um, also for just building that stamina and just um, trying to challenge your kids. Um, and then timers and clocks. Some of the resources and a lot of the programs we work in, we kind of require some of these things like when building, like we have a checklist that we'll go through um, so that the uh, sites know this is, like they're on a proper track to build in a literacy rich environment is labels. Labels everywhere. So labels on the desk, labels on the chairs, labels for word walls, labels on your materials, um, labels anywhere basically so kids can get familiar with the vocabulary especially kids who um, may not be English speakers um, they kind of can reference to the labels as well word walls and word walls change so I know like we have sight word walls but you may use a word wall for um, just the book or the theme that you have for that day or that week. You can also do um, personal word walls where it's just like a piece of paper that the kids get. Um, sometimes they're big, sometimes they're small, and the kids are able to kind of fill in their own, their own word walls. Literacy games, I know um, one of my favorite literacy games is Scrabble Slam. Um, it's one of the best games as an adult, I even enjoy it, but it gets very competitive and the kids love it. Um, inspirational book quotes posted around the room. Dr. Seuss is my go-to for that. Um, poster and anchor charts created with the youth. Um, again, it is very important. Literacy workstation. So for people who, um, most of our kids, sometimes we have maybe kindergarten and first grade and even second grade all in the same um, class from. So maybe um, first grade or whatever, people may be done or work at different paces. So um, if your child is done completing homework, they're able to go read a book or they're able to go over to a literacy workstation to complete an activity, a writing station um, or what have you. ELL strategies, um, again, you want to use those um, translation labels. You can also partner your kids, use signs, um, bilingual books, um, of course, and then some dictionaries and computers and stuff as well. And of course, um, most of that is on a computer as well. A lot of kids will pull out their phone like, oh, well, I'm using my phone for a dictionary. Um, so, um, just be mindful in allowing kids to kind of use the resources um, that they may also use at home. So a kid may not have a dictionary at home. They may have to use their phone. So just allowing them to kind of use the resources that they have 
um, when they are at the program. Again, the people, I feel like this is one of the most important parts of creating a literacy rich environment. Um, we want to make sure that all of the people who encounter the literacy rich environment um, are kind of on the same page, right? So adults reading independently, again, youth are going to mimic and mock adults, right? So if they see you reading and enjoying a book just for fun, they're more inclined to pick up a book and enjoy the book as well. Um, adults reading to children. So not just on read alouds, right? So also um, just a kid may come up to you and say, hey, can you read this book to me? Um, and that's something that we wanna hear. Um, adults and youth en engaged in conversation. So not just you helping them with homework or you giving them directions or leading them to an activity, but actually having the conversation. Um, one of my favorite programs to work with, um, that was one of the things that I noticed immediately my first day working with them that they asked, every adult had the chance to sit down and like ask each child, how was your day today, right? Um, another one of those things was um, the kids, maybe you may not have the time to sit down and ask every child, you know, how was your day, but um, just engaging, engaging in conversations with the kids is very important. Um, staff, parent, and student interaction. So we want the adults to kind of interact with the children, whether that's the parents, whether that's staff, whoever um, there is, sometimes, you know, adults kind of stand off or a little bit more standoffish when they come and visit, but we want to encourage them to kind of, um, you know, be involved and have those um, interactions with youth as well. Adults encouraging youth, right? So that's really, really a big thing. Like, I know a lot of, again, I've been a program director before in OST, I've been a facilitator, and a lot of times youth are so, um, a problem child may be so, like they may be so used to you saying, oh, you were having a bad day or you were bad, try again tomorrow, but really encouraging youth and doing the opposite of that <laughs> instead of redirecting them may be um, better. But also when you notice that a kid picked up a book today, you know, without being asked to or said, hey, can we play Scrabble Slam today without being asked, you know, we want to encourage you um, in many type of ways. Um, adults asking you questions, we want them to be have those starters, like ask those dis um, discussion starters and start those discussions with you, even if you just start the discussion and you remove yourself from it, right? We want to make sure that we're at least getting youth to kind of talk and debate and do all of those things, right? Um, adults challenging youth to think, again, we want to, even if we are starting those conversations, we can kind of remove ourselves once they're started and allow youth to kind of talk. Adults checking in with youth, um, adults, youth sharing information about their story. So we talked about kids maybe partnering up for independent reading, right? Um, so you may have a kid who may have loved a book, right? And they want to share that information with the with another child or with the entire class. So that chatter and that talk sometimes again, um, is not always bad. And then just you communicating with you. Any questions about that, guys, before we move on? No, um, La LaVon just put in the chat that um, ask the students how, how are they doing is crucial and necessary. And the response to him was, yes, it is. Building it in, into the program will definitely have a positive impact. Mm -hmm. And again, some of these norms and expectations are not just built on literacy. It should be for your entire program, right? Thank you for sharing. Kara, I just wanted to note um, what you said about, you know, sometimes the room will be lively and easy <laughs> as you're reading or as you're, um, you know, when you're doing your, um, in, even independent reading or um, creating your literacy rich environment. I think one thing that um, we, we like to encourage I know Victoria especially encourages it is that like if you go into a classroom while they're reading and it's completely quiet, then you know that raises our um, our little spidey senses up a little bit because we want to see we want to see life, you know, we want to see um, liveliness when um, folks when the kids are reading. So we don't we don't want it to be like a library where it's like really really quiet. We want to we want to see some some jumping up and down and some some life some life happening in the room. So just wanted to point that out. 
I think it, it demonstrates that motivation and that love, right? So if you can get young people to jump up out their seats and dance and move and be hyper about something, they're enjoying it. So that, that notion comes from the idea of if them dancing with the story is getting them to like the story, let them dance. Mm -hmm. So that's really where it was. And there's going to be times where you're going to need quiet and just, you know, in those moments you express that, but when you don't, don't have it, allow them to be free. Yeah, I agree with that, Victoria. So again, sometimes, you know, you as an adult or as um, a facilitator who has relationships with your children, you know, if John and Tim are over there discussing a book or if John and Tim are discussing Fortnite, right? So you could kind of use your relationships and, you know, um, your judgment when um, listening to the constructive chaos, as I like to call it. Like, it's a, sometimes that chaos is a good chaos because um, at least it's structured, right? So independent reading. Um, so most of the programs that I had the chance to work with, we kind of were just hitting independent reading. Some of us have been doing it for a little while before COVID-19 came and said, no, everyone go home. Um, so uh, independent reading is like something that we've always wanted to get to. Um, some sites have already been doing it. Some sites have just like, reach they've mastered literacy rich environment they've mastered read aloud and then they're waiting to master this so um dependent reading the key components of it is the frequency and duration so we want to make sure that you guys are um again remember i put that having a clock and a timer right so we're make, we want to make sure that we have a set time where kids know like put up your calendar kids know that every day between four o'clock and 4.45 or four o'clock and 4.30 that they'll be doing independent reading or they'll be doing literacy in 15 minutes of that time, they'll be doing independent reading, right? And they should be reading for this amount of time. And um, they know that maybe your schedule might be different. So maybe on Monday, Wednesday and Fridays are the days that we do independent reading. Um, so just make sure that it's consistent, right? And make sure that we're doing it for a certain amount of time, right? Um, and then again, we come back to choice their ownership, right? Making sure that kids are able to choose the books that they wanna read so that they're not being forced to do it. Even as adults, if we're forced to do something, we kind of rebel a lot, right? I don't wanna read this book if I'm being forced to read it. Um, so kind of giving them some ownership and the choice that they're able to, um, the books that they're able to read. And then response to text. So that discussion and that reflection and that evaluation. That's that chatter we're talking about, right? So that's them talking to their partner. That's their group discussion. That's that self-reflection when they have those reading logs that they're able to kind of write down. That's that time where they're taking their pen when they're independent reading and they're kind of writing some notes down um, off of the book that they're reading, right? So when, sorry, so when reading, one of the best things is I like to do is find just the right spot. So I'm saying, all right, class, we're getting ready to sit down for independent reading. You have three minutes to choose your book, right? You have two minutes to find the most comfortable spot and you have to stay in that spot for the entire time that we're doing independent reading, right? So find the just right spot for yourself. Um, and then allow them to read. So wherever that is, right? Um, allow kids to get comfortable and figure out what works for what what works best for the child. I had a child who could not sit still. So they would, but they loved reading. So they will walk around the room. So I had to give him like a perimeter. This is where you were able to walk around. So it was the space where he was by himself and he can just walk around the walk around in his space and read his book. And he did it for the entire 15 minutes while he was reading. Practice, again, set your routines and set goals. So today, I noticed that you read for 15 minutes straight and you did wonderful. You didn't miss any words, you didn't skip any words, you didn't have problem. Tomorrow, I want you to try to go for 18, right? Or tomorrow, I want you to go and try to read this book. Let's go up a level. So challenge your kids, set goals and make routines. Stay out the way. Allow readers to take charge of their reading time, right? So. 
stay out the way doesn't mean you go sit at your desk or you go sit down and you get on your phone and you check your Instagram. No, you still are monitoring your children. You're still checking to see what they're doing, walking around the classroom. Maybe you're putting up, you notice, um, your child may need a new sheet for their login. So maybe you're, you know, kind of replenishing the resources and materials for the kids. Um, maybe organizing the books and checking in um, with them, answering questions as well. But staying out the way and kind of allowing them to take charge of their reading time. Um, Here, let me add one thing, because some, some people were in the last session with Lori. This is also the perfect time for their differentiated like activity and learning. So this is the time where you know there's a child who may not, uh, who may, doesn't like to read by themselves or you want them to practice on something. So this is the perfect time to plug their, their activity in. Um, so they too feel a part of this opportunity. Thank you, Victoria. And lastly, but not least, um, making sure that we're checking in. So um, just at the end of your reading, you know, you have um, 15 minutes for reading today. So maybe around that 13 or 14 minutes, we're saying, hey, let's, you know, let's talk about some of the stuff that we read. Does anybody want to share? Maybe you could turn to your partners or maybe you could write it down and put it in a box and I'll look over them later. But we always want to know how did it go? Um, and then ask the kids how they felt about the book or you know how they felt about the author or whatever do they want to share. Are there any questions about that? Victoria, do we have anything new in the um, chat box? We're good on the chat box. All righty. All right, so again, checking in is very, very important. So I want to check in with you guys. Um, you can kind of either hop in the chat box if you want to talk to us, you can do that as well. Um, you can use the raise your hand feature and we'll kind of ask you to unmute. But we would like to hear from everyone again, whether it's in the chat box or whether you just speak to us um, to kind of check in. So what was one of the things that you learned from this workshop? Was one thing that you kind of wish you would have learned? Um, what excites you about light touch literacy? What's one thing that concerns you um, about light touch? touch literacy so we want everyone to check in so that's hi Erin how you doing how are you feeling I'm great well I mean I'm excited because half the stuff you already said it's already been done so <laughs> so I'm already excited so I said we already have our word wall we already have our quotes up and stuff like that so I mean I don't know I guess since I don't know since we already had when we started with you I guess I just kept that same you know energy going so when uh we did the access center because we got to decorate it and paint it and everything ourselves so when we did that we already start putting everything up and got our library together and stuff like that. So we kind of, I guess, the tab been ahead of the game. Erin, please share pictures. We would yeah. love it. I would okay. love it. Um, Tuesday, we got you, Tuesday. Erin is one of the sites that I was able to work with one-on-one. -on -one, and I love that even though I have not been with Erin since the beginning of 2020, that she is still implementing a lot of the stuff that we worked on when we um, had our coaching relationship. Um, so yay, I'm excited. Erin, please definitely send pictures. I will. And then we have a couple uh, um, people in the chat. So Angela really appreciated the point that it doesn't need to be quiet when young people are reading. Um, Colin, I think is how you say, it. if I'm saying it wrong, please forgive me um, and correct me so I can get it right. Um, said, wait a minute, we got, now what's going on? Now the chat is going. I like when you said to give the students three minutes to pick a book and two minutes for a comfy spot. Um, Lisa said, establishing the norms for your literacy rich environments, norms with the kids, she loves that. Um, I have always loved read alouds and talking about books with children. This is Dana. They always have a lot to see. I think 
a lot to see, I'm guessing, or say maybe um, no, no are saying it right. No are saying it right. I'm not sure. Um, if you want to unmute and clarify what your comment is, forget about forget about um, travel slam. Thanks for bringing it. Forgot about uh, travel slam. Thanks for bringing it back to the front of my brain. <laughs> uh wait a minute um i like when you said how you let your students walk around in certain areas to help them so that's what we had in the chat so far oh i'm saying your name right okay thank you okay great i got it now i'm sorry <laughs> all right guys we need everyone's participation for our check-in. Yeah, it was, um, oh, go ahead, Gail. <laughs> I posted um, that I like the idea of you, the changing of the word war, but I posted it privately. So <laughs> I was just <laughs> trying to <laughs> listen. <laughs> As the saying goes, technology makes some of us smart ones look a little, you know, not so smart. So. <laughs> But I did like what you said about the word wall because it was new to me. You know, I would post a word wall and just leave it or, you know, but that made so much sense, just switching it around and changing it. So I like that. So word walls are meant to be built, right? So you build vocabulary. So my, mm -hmm. my um, theory is that if you build upon the words that you've taught, then that is strengthening the vocabulary. So I don't remove words unless it's something completely different, but I build on them. So we add to the word wall. So you don't necessarily have to remove them. Maybe they're not the focal point for this reading. So you don't focus on those words, but you focus on some other words, but don't remove them. You right. want to always be reminded of all the words you've learned. Okay, good, gotcha. It was it's great thing for students to enjoy books and act them out. Someone said in the chat, Jane. And, Gail, I and love giving kids choice. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was reading. I'm sorry, Gail. I love that you stated that um, you're using your word walls now, right? Because a lot of people post them and they leave them there and the kids don't utilize them. The purpose of them is for the kids to kind of grow and learn the words. Um, and that is really, really important. So I use word walls for my son at home and I love them on tribal boards because sometimes the words that we're using may not be relevant to what he's learning right now, but um, they're, because they're on trifo boards, we're able to kind of go back and get them and bring them out if we need them again. So um, normally when you put them on the wall, it may be a little bit more difficult to, you know, go back to them. So if you um, are putting them on trifo boards or even in those um, literacy hangers, you're able to kind of put them and build upon them as you need. Why is it too Okay. In the chat, we had Anna, I think, said, hold on, wait a minute, I lost her. She said, she, um, I like um, the kids' choice for reading. I don't discourage if they want to explore books that are not in their level. Please don't discourage it, encourage it, encourage it. It will become their level at some point. So do not discourage that. Um, we had another comment. I'm going to mess this name up. Oh, I don't even want to try because I wouldn't mess it up. So it starts with the J. I learned to encourage kids. Could you tell me your name, please? Jerry Ellis. Jerry Ellis. Thank you because I did not want to mess your name up. I learned to encourage <laughs> kids to read more, to be more encouraged with them when it's reading time, not to always leave them reading on their own. Yes, that's a good, good point. Um, Tashida said, I like the suggestion and idea that you had giving us letting the kids pick their own books and letting them pick a comfortable place to be able to read their books what was an amazing idea. And then we have one more. Um, no, we have two more, I think. Wait, three more. Oh, y'all are moving quick. Um, Cherie said, I love reading. And when we have some great books, we have some great books at our sites and I can't wait to implement more reading and creating a word wall. Aurora said, I'm excited about supporting our students and finding the joy in, learn, in learning and about being able to give 
them choices and agency. The giving tree is fun. This is Tamara. The giving tree is fun to have the children act out. And that's all we have in the chat right now. So thank you everyone who, who shared, um, who offered in the chat box. We appreciate your, your input. Yes, thank you. I think the biggest thing for me to take back, um, you guys kind of proven that you are already um, doing a little bit light touch literacy at your site. And I think one of the major things to take back is it's your resources, it's your materials, and definitely the people. And with the people, you want to make sure that the youth are having ownership and that they are making a space their own as well. So if you apply that to read alouds, if you apply that to your literacy rich environment and to independent reading, I think you'll always kind of be on track. Victoria, is there anything you want to add? Jess, I want to thank everyone for being an amazing group on a Friday afternoon, um, giving us your time and your attention and offering all the amazing things you're doing at your site. Please continue to do uh, that work. And you have friends and staff um, here to support you and help you with any literacy concerns. Please don't hesitate to reach out. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, you're thank awesome. you, guys. And we look forward to seeing all the amazing things you do this year. Thank you, ladies. Yeah, just great, to um, echo Victoria and Kiara, y'all got this um, when it comes to literacy. Um, you all are literacy champions. So, you know, as again, we move from um, surviving to thriving um, in our access centers, we just want you to know that our literacy team is here for you. Um, if you do have any concerns with regards to literacy, we got y'all. Um, so thank you all for, um, for participating in our professional learning opportunities half day. We have a couple of more um, dates. We have a date in February um, that we will be sharing with everybody as well as March. Um, and I think, I think we have one in May as well. I'm going to put in the chat um, our training survey. So please take some time to um, fill that out for us so that we know what you guys need and we're um, kind of tailoring our trainings to your needs as opposed to kind of, you know, um, guessing what you need. Um, we wanna make sure that we're not um, wasting anybody's time or giving you something that you may not need. So please fill that out. Um, I am also gonna email that to you as well um, later on. So um, we're gonna give you a half an hour of your time back. Please use it. <laughs> please use that to, uh, Please get up out your seat. I have been in the same spot um, since 11 o'clock. Me and and baby are um, are a little we're a little tired right now. But we're gonna we're gonna get up. We're gonna do a little bit of stretching. Um, and yeah, so everybody have a great Friday. If you um, do have a, a three day weekend, have a great three day re weekend. Get some rest. Um, rest and relax. And thank you all. And one other thing, Kiara, add your email to the chat. Too, so folks can hear that as well. And mine, I can add mine if I can find it. And as, well, we're say, um, as they're adding their emails, I don't know if anybody else from the OCF um, staff want to say anything, but um, I know we have some program liaisons on the line as well as um, Angela. So if you guys want to do some shout outs or say anything, please feel free to do so. I just want to say thanks everyone who came and thanks for making time to meet with your program liaisons over the next two weeks to talk about literacy successes and challenges. So we know that you're all doing amazing work and we just want to be able to capture the story of the great work you're doing and provide support if you want to take it to the next level. So thank you all and happy Friday. And then George, I didn't miss your comment. Um, yes, your professor probably did talk a lot about differentiated learning. So mm -hmm. looking forward to implementing that into literacy as well. So thank you. And Angela, thank you for your comment. Thank you, everyone. Have a great Friday, everyone. I hope everyone enjoys their three-day weekend. Bye. All right, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.